Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the Eco OH2 Opal. This is a new earphone from Eco. It's a single dynamic driver earphone, which is a first for the company. Up until now, they've only released hybrid earphones, so that's interesting. And it comes in at around 80 bucks, which again is actually another first for Eco because up until this point, all of their earphones have been priced above 100 bucks. So the, the OH2 Opal, their first single dynamic, their first under 100 bucks, and that puts it in some pretty tough competition, right? So we've recently reviewed the Dunu Titan S. Um, that's another single dynamic driver earphone for 80 bucks. There's also the Moondrop. Aria, another single dynamic driver earphone for around 80 bucks. And then the one that I've got here with me is the Moondrop Stardust, which can get around 70 to 80 bucks, depending on where you find it. Um, but yeah, what I wanted to do and what I've been doing for the past couple of weeks is just spending some time listening to the OH2, which we've got here, as well as those other earphones and just comparing them so I could figure out where does the OH2 land? Uh, is it a hit? Is it a flop? Because let's be frank, this is coming on the heels of the OH-1S. It was another Eco earphone that came out about six months ago. And frankly, that one was pretty disappointing. It was a very big departure for Eco. They're known for kind of these big, bassy, V-shaped IMs. And the OH-1S was their attempt at a neutral sound signature. Now, just a little bit of a spoiler. I'll say right now, this is actually another attempt at a neutral-ish sound signature, but I can say right up front, this is at half the cost of the OH-1S. I think this is actually the better earphone. So we'll dig into the details and I guess that's what we'll do right about now. But just as kind of a, a disclaimer, if you're here now live and you have any questions about the OH-1, or sorry, the OH-2, this is a live stream. Hence, I just said the wrong earphone. Uh, this is a live stream. If you have any questions, now's your chance. Leave them in the live chat. And at the end of the review, uh, we'll sit, hang out and have a little bit of a conversation. And hopefully I can answer any questions you've got. Other than that, I guess, shout out to Eco for sending these earphones in for review. And with that out of the way, let's dive to the table and start talking about what comes inside the box. So preview of the box itself. This is the box. They've got their own character on art on it. And I got to say, I'm actually pretty into the style. I think it's a unique departure from the, the typical I am. Um, uh, uh, I don't know if this, this doesn't even really necessarily count as anime, but this is a, a bit of a, a more mature animation style. So I like that personally. Uh, other than that, let's see, what can we find on the box? Interestingly, they do post the frequency response, and this is pretty accurate to what I measured. Now, if you want to see my measurement, I don't usually do measurements in the reviews, but if you want to check out my measurement, I do have it on squig.link. And in fact, it's linked in the description down below. But I just wanted to say it is nice that they include their own frequency response graph here. But otherwise, let's see if we can find out anything about it. It's got lightweight and durable zinc, copper, alloy, aluminum friendly PC ultra light material. That is a bit of a mouthful. Um, okay, they claim that it's extremely comfortable. That's not very interesting. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. It's a dynamic driver. We know that. I don't know. Frankly, not a whole lot that interesting on the box. So we'll put that one to the side and let's just talk about what's actually inside the box. And what's interesting right off the bat is that what you get in this box is basically exactly what you get with the OH-1S gems. And that was a $200 earphone. So apart from the, the earphone sounding different, basically everything else is the same, including this fairly odd selection of ear tips. Uh, you do get a set of foams, and I think of the, the ear tips that are included here, the foams were probably my favorite, um, because otherwise you get these really, I, I don't know, maybe these work for some people. I don't, I just find them awkward and um, because I'm not used to them, it, they never quite feel like they fit right. So not a big fan of these silicone ear tips, although they do come in plenty of sizes. So ostensibly, if you fiddle with it, you can find uh, your own correct fit. Although spoiler, look, I've got different ear tips on here because was not a big fan of any of these ear tips, but you do get plenty of them. Uh, they also include a little kind of an interesting carry pouch. Oh, I didn't even open this up. What's inside there? Okay, there's an ear cleaning thing. Uh, and it looks like we got some spare filters that also came with the gems, but otherwise, I don't know. It's an interesting way to carry your IMs. It's nice and minimalistic, but to be perfectly honest, it's not gonna provide much in the way of protection. Um, it's, you know, very much a soft floppy pouch. Um, and I don't know, it, 
not a big fan of that either. Uh, the one thing I am a big fan of, and, and I'm not being sarcastic, is this collectible pen. I think this is a really neat touch that Eco includes in a handful of their different earphones. And it's nice that they include it here, even with their budget uh, OH2. So this is just like a little a pen. I forget exactly how this clasp works. There you go. It's a little bit tricky, but um, I think that's a cool touch. I wish more IEM manufacturers would include that kind of like fan servicey type stuff. But that's the accessories. Let's go ahead and talk about the earphone itself. And we'll start by talking about the cable that this comes on, which again is exactly the same cable that came on the OH1S gems. And I'm pretty much going to say all the same things I said about it before. You can see I just unwound it and it kind of wound itself back up. Uh, it's, it's pretty stiff and memory prone. Not my favorite cable, although I do think it looks really handsome. Let's punch in on that so you can just kind of appreciate the, the layering and the colors. Like it's got this red and blue cables wound around each other and it's covered in a bit of a smoke plastic, I suppose. So it looks really cool. It's got nice hardware, nice small Y split. It's got an actually fairly functional chin cinch, not the most staying in place, but I don't know, I have no complaints there. Um, so it's pretty nice hardware, but it's just, unfortunately, it it's kind of thin and wiry and holds its holds its shape. So it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a nuisance to, to, to deal with. That said, honestly, not a big deal. Um, but otherwise, that brings us up here to the top of the cable, which is an MMCX cable. Um, getting almost rare at this point. It feels like two pins kind of taking over, but Eco is sticking with the MMM. That was at least one too many M's, but you can figure it out. MMCX cable. Um, the, uh, the, the upside or maybe downside, depending on how you see it, is that MMCX cables like this one, you, the earpiece can rotate around on the cable, which can potentially give you a slightly better fit for your ear. I, I, I don't know. I think I'm getting kind of annoyed by it when it's not super stiff. Very, very minor thing. This is not a legit complaint, but um, it does it does tend to rotate around itself. So. You do have that, but otherwise we're talking about these earpieces now. And these earpieces are, as far as I can tell, essentially the exact same shape as the OH-1S. Uh, the big difference is going to be on the outer shell where the OH-1S had that meteor pattern on it. Um, kind of kind of lumpy and intentionally so. It looked pretty cool, frankly. But honestly, here with the OH-2, I think this looks pretty handsome as well. They've still got that translucent plastic uh, sort of combination going on with the metal I believe these are metal. Let's give it the clean test. Oh yeah, that's some sort of aluminum. Oh wait, that's right, we just read it. it was some aluminum, zinc, alloy, something or other. Um, we'll trust them on that one. Uh, but otherwise, um, what was I gonna say? I was, yes, I was just saying that the shape is, the, the outer panel is slightly different. Um, the other big difference here with the OH2 is that these actually come in different colors. So I've got the gold model here. This also comes in like a white, it comes in a, a I think there's like a lavender color. There's a, a, a dark green, and I think that's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of when IEMs are available in multiple shades, uh, just in case you're particular about your shade. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's a nice touch. And frankly, I think these gold pieces look really, really pretty handsome. And this is a unique color that I don't see a lot on earphones. As far as how they are to fit in my ears, again, exactly the same as the, uh, the OH-1S. So we'll punch in so you can take a look at that. It's a very small fitting IM, which I actually, I quite like. Like these plug into my ear, you can see it's past the tragus inside there. Um, and because it's so small and unobtrusive, I find the nozzle is plenty long, but not overly long. So I get a nice seal, um, very comfortable, disappears into the ear and it does have sort of that negative, negative uh, profile. So if you're looking for an earphone to sleep in, the OH2 is actually a pretty good option for that. Um, maybe give you the side profile so you can kind of see how that's not sticking out at all. Uh, so yeah, generally pretty happy with the fit. Again, my only minor complaint is the MMCX cable lets them spin. So sometimes they're a little bit out of place and I didn't notice that. That's the only reason I know I mentioned that. But yeah, that's about, I think as much as I can say about the physical stuff here on the OH2. So let's talk about the sound and we'll talk about move this stuff out of the way for a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about generally the sound signature, which is like what I like to start with. And um, the general sound signature, I already kind of alluded to it a little bit. This is a version of neutral. 
where Eco had been initially kind of known for basey V-shaped IMs with the OH-1 and then later the OH-10, it's interesting to see the company steer toward neutral sound signatures. Now with the OH-1S, the last earphone they released, I think it just did not work out that well. It was like just overly bright, um, pretty fatiguing, frankly. And this one is not that at all. So I would say in terms of uh, neutral sound signature, this is on the warmer side. I would describe this as a warm neutral. Um, it's got a relaxed, somewhat somewhat dark treble actually. Um, but I think that vocals and mid-range and stuff like that, they put the vocals position about where they should be. You do have a somewhat full lower mid-range and the bass curve on this is a bit mid bassy So that full lower mid-range plus that mid bassiness again, it's not a bassy I am. This is very much a neutral tuned I am. So if you're looking for a bassy set, I would look at something else that Eco's done or some other earphone. But what bass is here? It's got, you know, it's got a bit of that, that mid bass bump. So in combination with the full lower mid range, that's what contributes to this sounding a little bit on the warm side. Um, and then, yeah, other than that, I don't know, that, that's basically the sound signature. So I guess we can just dive into what I like about listening to the OH2. And generally I'll just say that sound signature one, I think it's pretty unique in the, in the price range. Like it reminds me of something like the final E500, which is it's, I would describe that as kind of a warm neutral sound signature, but that's very much in the budget budget range. Still a very good sounding earphone, but build quality and stuff like that is very much sacrificed. So if you're looking for something with a similar sound signature, at least in the in the, the same vicinity, uh, but with nicer build quality, the OH2 is, is, is there. Uh, and then I mentioned that the treble here is a little bit dark, which we'll get to in a little bit, but the plus side of that is that it's just not going to be fatiguing at all. So if you are sensitive to treble, uh, any emphasis in treble, frankly, I think the OH2 is not going to be a risk for anybody. So that's good. I think just generally tonally, it sounds about right. And it fills a nice hole, I think in this price range. And then the base that's on here, again, not a super bassy set, but what's here is I think decently punchy, despite the fact that it's not really a bass emphasized set. You do get a nice physicality of the bass, which you don't always get. So, that's what I like here about the OH2. We'll now talk about some of the things maybe I don't love about it. Um, no earphones perfect. And so I would say that as much as I think the bass is, again, not a bassy earphone and it does have a decent physicality, I did find that the low end can get a little bit stuffy. So um, just kind of like the, the separation between the mid bass and the lower mid range can give the sound a bit of a stuffiness to it. You know, uh, and then again, that bass does have a decent physicality, but it does roll off in the in the sub bass, which can it just doesn't quite hit with those low deep notes that you might get on some other earphones. Not terrible in that sense, but it's definitely not its strength here. Um, and then you know, I, I mentioned the trouble being relatively tame, and, and you do get. Well, I also mentioned it being a little bit dark. You do still get a decent sense of separation in the sound signature. Um, there is a little bit of, it's not completely dark and not completely rolled off or anything like that, but um, the treble is definitely not the standout here. This is this is very much an earphone tuned for the mid-range. It's got enough, enough treble to give you some decent sense of head stage and imaging, but honestly, those aren't very standout either. Um, and in combination with that somewhat thick lower mid-range and mid-bass can give this just a little bit of a stuffy sound. So. That's generally what I think of the Eco OH2, but I guess we can actually talk about it in context of some of those other earphones that I mentioned. So let's go ahead and slide those things into view. Maybe move these things out of the way to make room for our competitors of the day. And I'll warn, I already mentioned the Moondrop Aria. We're not gonna bring that one in today. Just honestly, I, I, I didn't wasn't that interested in listening to it, so. Um, these are the earphones that I spent most of the time comparing with the OH2. And uh, we'll talk about how these things stack up in terms of tuning, talk about them in terms of technicalities and then form factor stuff like that. So uh, what do we have? All right, the OH2 80 bucks single dynamic driver earphone, the Dunu Titan S. This one just came out a couple months ago. Also $80, also single dynamic driver earphone. And then here we have the Moondrop Stardust, which is basically just a, a re 
colored version of the Moondrop SSR. The tuning is slightly different here on the Stardust, but it's not significant. So if you are either not able to buy the Stardust, it's available on like uh, um, on some Asian markets. Like maybe I got it on Taobao or Shopee or something like that for around 80 bucks. It is also was recently on drop for 60 bucks. But you can also, frankly, get this earphone in SSR form for around 40 bucks. Um, so yeah, the pricing on this one's a little bit ambiguous, but still one that I quite like listening to. All right, in terms of sound signature, the reason I have all these three up here is that, frankly, these are all single dynamic drivers in the same price range, but they're also different flavors of what I would say is a neutral sound signature here on the OH2. Again, kind of a warm neutral. It's a little bit on the mid bassy sound or a mid bassy side. Um, the treble is a smidge on the dark side, uh, but yeah, that's generally what you got here. Still mid range focus, just more toward that lower mid range. Um, here on the Dunu Titan S, I would describe this as a bright neutral. So in contrast to this being a warm neutral, this one is a little bit lean in the lower mid range. Um, the bass emphasis is a little bit more toward the sub bass, uh, but you do get quite a bit more forwardness in the vocals. The, the trade off here is that the treble on the Titan S can potentially be a little bit fatiguing depending on your personal preferences. I actually find it to be pretty okay, but um, especially versus something like the OH2, the treble is definitely gonna be a little bit riskier here. And then the Stardust is, is, is a little bit of an odd one to place. I would describe this as kind of a lean neutral. It is bright. In fact, it's probably the brightest of the bunch just in terms of pure uh, SPL treble presence. Um, but it's actually surprisingly smooth in, in the treble, uh, unlike, you know, where these ones have some treble peaks. The treble here on the Stardust is, is, it's definitely forward, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't really have quite that effect of um, being piercing or anything like that. I will also say that the tuning here is probably the most skewed in the vocals, the vocal region. They're, they're definitely forward, um, but they're maybe maybe a little bit forward in sort of the, the top end of vocals, a little bit too much, which can, you know, can skew the tonality, but uh, it's it's been an earphone I listen to for, I listen to a lot. Uh, and the reason that's on this table is because frankly, despite that fact, I really love this. So, all right, that's basically the sound signatures. You got your warm-ish neutral, you've got your bright-ish neutral, and then you've got your bright plus lean-ish neutral. Um, let's talk about the more, the more exciting aspects of the sound signature, the, the, the technicalities, right? We're talking about soundstage imaging, separation, I think is probably the better word for it. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive in. So the OH2, again, I would say the technicalities here are not bad, um, but I think of the bunch, they're probably the weakest. It's, it's just a combination of that sound signature, uh, which is, again, it's going for that warmish mid-range. Um, and then you got that somewhat dark treble, which keeps it from being super well-defined up top. And then the bass rolls off a little bit on the sub bass, which keeps it from being super well-defined at the bottom. And so what you end up with is somewhat of a rounded character in the sound signature. Again, not bad at, by any stretch, but of the bunch here, I would say it is the weakest. Um, well, actually, let's go ahead and rank these. And then these two, these are, I would say the, the Do New Titan S is probably in the middle in terms of technical qualities. I think um, this one's actually got pretty solid imaging uh, because of, you know, comes from that bright sound signature. And I think the bass is, is better defined here on the Titan S than it is on the gems. The only real issue I have with the, the, the technicalities or the, the non quite tonal characteristics of the Titan S is that the treble does have a little bit of a scratchy character to it. And I don't know, maybe it is purely from the tonality. Maybe everything is purely from the tonality. Uh, I don't want to get into that, that debate, but uh, there is a bit of an odd scratchy timbre to the treble here on the Dunu Titan S. For me, it's not like a scratchiness and an abrasive, like a, a fatiguing sense or anything like that. It's just, it's just got a bit of a timbre to it, which stands out and maybe prevents that from sounding 100% entirely smooth. Uh, and that will leave me up here with the Stardust up top is I think the, the, the most technical of the bunch here. Just got really, really great imaging and really smooth sound signature across the board. Again, despite the fact this being some 
arguably the brightest earphone here. Maybe that's not even arguable. Like if you were to measure just purely on treble, this one's got the most. It still comes across the smoothest, which is interesting. Um, and then the bass here, this is definitely not a bassy I am. In fact, this is probably the least amount of bass of the bunch, but I would actually say it's probably the best bass. And maybe it's because I'm not a big bass head and I like less bass, but I don't know, there's something to the physicality and the tightness and the just, yeah, just the, the overall tightness and the way that the bass hits on the Stardust and the SSR. I friggin' love it. Uh, and then let's, um, I guess I didn't rank them in terms of sound signature. They're all kind of different versions. I guess I would rank them probably like this in terms of tonality. So just for posterity, sorry for that being out of order, but now we'll talk about the form factor and how I would rank these things. This one's actually, hmm, I don't know how I'd rank these. Maybe I'd rank these two about equal and, oof, this is this is a tough one. Um, I'll just talk about how they're different. Uh, they, all, they all have different strengths and weaknesses. And I think frankly, they're all pretty handsome, which is kind of surprising for, you know, sub $100 sets to have a selection of earphones that are actually this attractive. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but the OH2, I think of the bunch, this one definitely fits me the best. Um, all of them are very small. They all plug into my ear really well, but I think this one fits me the best in terms of just being purely comfortable, like don't have to think about it and still really surprisingly secure. So I dig that. Not necessarily a big fan of the accessories that come with the OH2. Again, we, we, we talked about the ear tips not being a big fan of this cable, being a little overly stiff, but I don't know, not too shabby. Um, the Dunu Titan S, the, this is also a very secure fitting IM, but the one difference here is that the nozzle is pretty, pretty lengthy. I don't know if that's gonna stand out necessarily here in a comparison, but I can say in my ear, this one definitely fits deeper. So this one gives me kind of the deepest fit, um, maybe the highest level of sound isolation, if that's a thing that you value, it doesn't really matter to me that much, but it does, because it fits so deep, it does isolate better. But I also think that it, because of that, it somewhat sacrifices in terms of comfort. You know, it's not like an uncomfortable I am or anything like that. It's just almost eddy, etymotic levels of deep fit. And if you're not used to that, that might be something to get used to here. Uh, and then aesthetically, I mean, I think this thing's pretty handsome. Again, I think they're all pretty handsome. This one's just got a nice metal shell uh, with a unique kind of cyberpunkish look. And then the cable that comes on the Titan S is frankly, not too shabby a cable. In fact, of the bunch here, this one's probably the nicest cable, but that's gonna lead us into talking about the Moondrop Stardust, which again, this is a very handsome I am. I'm just a big fan of this aesthetic, which is why, despite the fact I already have a number of Moondrop SSRs, I bought this one because I liked the way that it looks. Um, yeah, I don't know, cool paint job. Uh, these are also very tiny. Now, I, these are all very tiny, but I don't know if it's really going to come across just how tiny the SSR is, just how insubstantial uh, the physicality of this thing is. And so because of that, it plugs into my ear nice and comfortably. I don't feel it. The one trade-off is I think that it doesn't fit quite as securely as these two do. Um, but apart from that, I don't know, not too much to complain about in terms of fit. And then the cable that it comes with is basically the same cable that comes with the Moondrop Stardust which is not too bad a cable, although I think the original SSR actually comes with a better cable. And I think that's about as much as I gotta say about how all these different earphones compare. So I think we're also ready for the score here on the Eco OH2. And out of five stars, I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing very solid three stars. This is, a, I think, a good option at around 80 bucks for a single dynamic driver earphone. You're looking for something that's neutral, but not completely devoid of bass. The OH2, not a bad pick. Maybe not my favorite pick of the bunch, right? We just talked about how these compare to some of my other favorites, but um, I don't know, if you're into the look, you're into a warm, neutral sound signature, you could definitely do a lot worse than the OH2. So if you're interested in checking out this earphone, I do have links in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and the YouTube will let you know next time I'm live. And when I'm live, when you're here live, you can have a conversation with me like I'm about to have with the folks that are here live now. Uh, otherwise, if you're here just for the review, I'll catch you later on the next Super Review. And if you are here live, let's have a chat after I drink some water.